Just, yeah. yeah. Pick, There's fucking mop, puddles. ladies. Dude, <laughs> fucking two, two feet of standing water. Yeah, get some. At the bar in Hoboken. <laughs> You get You're fucked by Henry. <laughs> get some yeah, Hank. A little bit. I just I want to see Hank, I want to see Hank fucking. Hank's yeah, I know. PFD is obsessed <laughs> with Hank's sex life. Not like I don't want to actually see it. I just want to. No, I, I, think, I, I, want, I think you do. I want. Put in my take, YouTube. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Best podcast in the world. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. On today's part in my take, we have the MVP. Mitch Trubisky on the show. We told you after Grit Week we had a couple leftover interviews, so we have Mitch Trubisky today. We have Ryan Fitzpatrick on Wednesday. I wouldn't even call them leftover interviews. I no, think they're just they're just good interviews. Yes, There's, there was just uh, not enough week for us. Yeah. So Mitch Trubisky, awesome interview. Talk to him about everything. Uh, this was taped before he lit up the Bears in preseason game two. We're going to talk a little bit about preseason week two. Uh, we have Who's Back of the Week. We have Mount Rushmore of Buildings. And we're going to do it all in a second. We're brought to you by our friends at Chevy. The Chevy Silverado is the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Silverado is strong, advanced, dependable, hardworking. It is the best truck ever created. Use it for tailgating, hauling, towing, off-roading, moving day, helping out your friend or family member, road trips. I actually, uh, when we were in Buffalo... Staying at our hotel, I saw a guy get into a Chevy Silverado, and I had big time FOMO of not having a Silverado. I had a Silverado for one weekend last year, and it was the greatest weekend of my life. So, if you want to have the greatest life, go buy a Chevy Silverado right now. It is the greatest truck that has ever been created. We're still running our deal, say code PMT or take in a salesperson's ear. They'll give you $100 off your Chevy Silverado and tell them that we sent you. So check it out. If you're looking in the market for a truck, if you're thinking, hey, can I be a truck person? Well, you can. Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Today is Monday, August 23rd, and boys, we officially have made it. We have just completed the last weekend without meaningful football. We are here. Next Saturday, college football week zero happens. You might say, I don't want to watch UConn versus Fresno State. I don't uh, watch Nebraska versus Illinois. I want to watch all of it. Yeah. By meaning, meaningful football, when I hear that, I think Scott Frost mm -hmm. and Bielema. Bielema. That, you got it. Like a, a match you almost didn't Titans. pull that. <laughs> I, almost, I almost said Lovey Smith. You had it in your I've head. Gotta, I saw you. I've got to do a hard reset. This, yes. is, this happens every year. Yes. We forget about the different teams that different players are on. Remember, Corey Davis is a Jet. And we Bud did, Dupree's on the Titans. Bud Dupree's on the Titans. Yeah, we were. It was funny. We were on Pittsburgh radio on what Tuesday morning. Yeah. last week, and we were talking about the defense. I was like, I like Bud Dupree, and they just looked at me. They're like, <laughs> they're like Bud's no longer in here. Tennessee, and I had your back. Yeah. I was like, listen, guys, this is what we. Ha this is what happens to us. It takes us a second to just hard reset, but we're here. Yeah, we I finally have gotten to the the point where I, I need someone to tweet me tomorrow morning. Like, we will have football, or Jake, you figure it out. How many days in a how many days, weekends in a row will we have football? You got it. Also, Josh Allen reminded you guys in an interview that Emmanuel Sanders is on the Bills. Yes, that's, that's right. true. Yes, that's yeah. True. Yeah. You, you have to remember, all the, I do think, though, that the Steelers should have a linebacker that just becomes Bud the name Dupree. Bud Dupree. It's a great name for Steelers But we've linebacker. made it. We've made it. Football yep. is back. Week zero, baby. Week zero. Let me just give you the week zero. It's football just, week. If you want to just think about it. All right, so Nebraska at Illinois starts it off. Hawaii at UCLA. UConn at Fresno State. Southern Utah at San Jose State throw out the record books when those two teams play, and then the nightcap UTEP at New Mexico State. I love it. I don't. Yeah, I'm going to be watching all of it. It's going to be great. It's just going to. It's going to be one of those days where you sit down and you're like, I don't know how much football I'm going to watch today. You're going to put it on, mm -hmm. and you're going to be on your couch all day because we've missed it so yes. very deeply. Yes. So we've made it. Uh, preseason week two happened. We're back from grit week. Great grit week. By the way, if you didn't see. Uh, we posted shirts Friday afternoon, probably the worst time to do it. So please go buy a shirt if you can. It says, uh, was it sauciness size, sauciness, sauciness crunch. crunch. And it is a shirt that a hundred percent of the net proceeds are going to Ed and Alicia to hopefully 
get them on the road to getting their own restaurant, Wing Nuts, which it's I'll I'll fully admit it. It's a it's somewhat selfish because I'm hoping that they hit it so big that it just becomes a franchise around the country and whatever city you're in, there's a wing nuts. I, I don't know if that would ha- I don't know if Ed would let that happen because I don't know he's either. so hands on with yeah. his wings. I listen, you're not ashamed to admit that I'm not ashamed to admit that I told like seven different people the full story of wing nuts this weekend. Oh yeah. And just how good the wings were. I was on DC radio at noon on Friday and they asked me a question about like uh, what do you think about Samus Reyes? I know he's out with a concussion, but do you think that he's gonna be able to step into that third tight end role? And I was like, let me tell you a little bit about wing nuts yes. in Buffalo. And I yes. went on like a five minute unprompted diatribe about how great these wings were. So yes, I, I, I do hope that they get their own place. I had people hit me up being like, dude, are they really that good? And yeah. I was like, stop everything you're doing. They're fucking better than uh-huh. that. I, I went out to dinner last night at a, a bar that I know has great chicken wings here in town, and I looked at them, and I got like a, a knot in the pit of my stomach. I'm like, I can't order these wings. I actually... They would, ru- the wing nuts ruined chicken wings yeah, for me because yeah. I can't have an, another wing. I would actually say, like, I'm not a religious person. I think religion is kind of a crock of shit, but I, I understand now why people, like, see the light. Because mm-hmm. that's what wing nuts is to me. Yeah, like you could see me being a crazy person sitting outside of Madison Square Garden, being like, "Have you absolved your sins and have you eaten at wing nuts?" Dude, if churches had wings in them, I would go all the time. Yes, yeah. so they I get to, it. I get it. People, they just got crackers themselves. and wine. It's kind of a crock yeah. of shit. I lose you. Lose yourself in religion. I've lost myself in wing nuts. Yeah. We're there. We're the same. Oh. We're, we're, we're the same people when it comes out to it. Speaking of religion, I think Billy may have seen the light this weekend. Oh yeah, in the preseason. Yeah, Billy, this is a good segue to our preseason yeah. week. So so preseason wrap up for for week two. The dress rehearsal. I, we did the math. Yeah. Dress rehearsal was the second, third, and fourth quarter of week two. Yes. So Zach Wilson got in, played pretty well, went nine for eleven, had a bunch of what two touchdowns? Two touchdowns, around one hundred and twenty eight yards. I think that may be wrong. Okay. But he looked amazing. He was seeing the field. He was just picking apart um, the Packers defense. It was honestly like amazing to see as a Jets fan. And I shot from the hip and shot out there. You know, I was watching the highlights again today, and I was like, Zach Wilson wins the Super Bowl for the Jets. I'm going to convert to Mormonism. Okay. No so, more beers, Billy. Is wow. It Wait, no more caffeine. No, yeah. no, no, you can. You no, 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 actually, no, no, no. The thing is, when I said that, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll just convert. But then I forgot about all like the strict stuff. You forgot I about guess, the entire religion. I yeah. guess technically you could just be a bad Mormon. <laughs> yeah, I'll be a bad Mormon. Right. I'm so down to be a bad Mormon. Okay. Uh, I got like my. The kidnapper guy. Yeah. yeah. My inboxes got oh, flooded. <laughs> Deep cut. Just, yeah, just kid a, stuff. You yeah, can you can let Jake jerk it off. I'm trying to think of Mormons. It's that's... just kid stuff. Yeah. Jeez, but yeah, then I got a bunch of DMs from Mormon missionaries, okay. which is kind of hilarious. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, they yeah. fucking smelled the They're like, blood. hey, can we talk to you about the Church of the Latter-day States? Yeah, and Billy's like, a hot lead right now. I was uh-huh. like, we got to win the Super Bowl first. <laughs> so basically, Zach Wilson may be on his mission converting people by making them make Super Bowl bets. So there okay. you go. Okay, Good. yeah, join the movement. Yes. <laughs> Billy, you could, be, you could actually have a church named after if you recruited enough people to get in this same boat with you. Actually, if... Enough Jet fans join me and they win a Super Bowl, then yeah, we should yeah. do like a whole pact. I honestly think that you could you could pull Jet fans and say, would you give up caffeine, alcohol, sex before marriage if it meant that you got a Super no, Bowl no, no. title? I would and like, a bunch of wives. You could get a bunch of wives, yeah. We would just be bad Mormons. I'd open like a bad Mormon temple. I think you. Like, all right. So let's just let's clarify. Can you imagine if Greeny I, signed up and he'd be like, yeah. "My wives." <laughs> I, I I think you have to give. I think if if you win a Super Bowl, you have to give. You have to be a good Mormon for a year at least. Jeez. That yes, you can't. <laughs> yeah, but can't uh, otherwise, like what is this? Yeah, How about the this rest nothing. of no, February? No, 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 no. This is nothing. Otherwise, you if Zach Wilson, well, I would wins actually Super Bowl, convert. Yes, and you have to be. You have to follow all the the rules for one full year. That is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Sorry, and if you, you fuck up, it. the clock resets. I think you can do caffeine. Nope, Billy. I, I'll say this: if Zach Wilson wins a Super Bowl. And it, so it's over the course of his entire career for the Jets. For the Jets. Yeah, for the it Jets. It has to be for the Jets. If he wins and you do not follow the Mormon rules, you're fired. Mm-hmm. You're fired until you complete a year. Now, you can be on. You can stay on now the show. I'm, now I'm a Jets fan. In that first year. <laughs> Jesus. This but, is a- but if you fuck up. Then you're out. Bro, being Mormon free? Yes. You said you it. You said it. And I like us. forgot about okay, well, like, guess what Mormons what? actually do. You've just been do. reminded. All yeah. right. So, so that's the deal. Um, other things. Big Ben looked awesome. Yes. Big Ben's pump fake is back. 
It also made me, uh, I don't know why I started following this guy, but it went back to the um, writer Ryan Burr. Remember when we read his tweets? Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was bumping all his tweets. Just as a refresher, he said, Ben's camp says biggest concern is weight loss. He has been so driven since season ended. Sources say his diet is stricter than Brady. And source goes on to say, from an arm standpoint, Ben is more likely to win his first league MVP than finish outside top 10 in passing. Again, his, uh, the ben, camp. ben is the source. But, I listen, when, like there's signs of Big Ben when he is doing that pump fake that gets the, enti gets the camera to move, and uh -huh. then he throws to Heath Miller for a touchdown. It's like, okay, the, the Steelers are back. Steelers are big time, officially back. Heath Miller looked great as he's ever been. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's still 25 years old out there. I, it's preseason for the cameraman, too, because I've yeah. been noticing a lot of that on like play actions. They're getting duped pretty easily. Yes. And if you're a cameraman right now, you have to buckle down because the robot cameras in the end zones that are shooting in 8K are coming for your job. Yes. So we need to buckle that shit up by week one. Uh, I, I would have this been as my number one quarterback in the division. Mm. This bin mm. that we saw from the last week. Well, Let's not forget, by the way, our friend Joe Burrow is coming back. Yes, I feel like we haven't said his name. I haven't heard his name out there that much. Joe Burrow, he was... What, what did we end up calling him last year? I think he, he moved past poise. Mm -hmm. I think he ended up being that dude mm -hmm. before he got his knee broken in half. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we need to respect Joe Burrow more. Absolutely. We also need to respect... I mean, it is now... It has become like an insane story, the fact that the, the Baltimore Ravens have won 19 preseason games in a row. Mm -hmm. That's just – that is actually a, a, a streak that needs to be like acknowledged and also given a ton of credit because they're not – like you could just do that by playing all your starters for the entire – all the preseason games. They're obviously not doing that. They haven't lost a preseason game since 2015. So I, I'm convinced that somewhere in John Harbaugh's like contract – there's got to be a bonus for winning preseason games because it makes no sense. I think John Harbaugh has in the back of his head all the time uh, that he's been beaten up by his brother playing sports mm -hmm. in the backyard. So if he has a chance to win at something. Competition. Yeah. If he has a chance to compete and win, he's going to do it each and every time. Got to take advantage of, of every chance you have to win, even when the other coach like obviously doesn't care about winning yes. in a game. So the question becomes, do we bet on it? Or because I feel like the second that we no, the second we get in on it's it, it's been too late. It's gonna be over. It, it's been we'll too late. It. I've like I've thought about betting on it last week, this week. It's too late. It's too late. You mm -hmm. can't you you can't get on. You have to be like very early on. I I always go back to whatever I think it was UTEP and their streak of they were a bad basketball team. Look it up for me, Jake. I think it was, they were was it SMU? No, it was UTEP basketball. They they covered like thirteen games in a row, and I was on it from like. Game four, and it was one of the greatest feelings to be on that, or the Blackhawks' first period over mm -hmm. run a couple years ago. You have to be in on it in the within the first, I'd say, half dozen games to really feel like invested, and also be at the point where you're going to bet it blindly, knowing that you've already made your money. Mm -hmm. Like if you get to that, because like that's really what it comes down to is if you have been betting this Ravens preseason thing. For a couple of years, you just keep smashing the bet, knowing that you're still going to come out on top. Yeah, but we're too late, and if we bet it, it will obviously go the other way. Yeah, I don't know. I I feel like I have to get in in the last game. I do it. I have to try. Go full set. I mean, New Jersey's going to have the Barstool Sportsbook, right? Yes. yes. I feel like that's got to be my inaugural bet on it. Yeah. Is Trace McSorley playing? Uh, I don't know. No, he's out for this uh, for the preseason with back injuries. Oh, mm. okay, that's not good. That's tough. That's really bad. Um, all right, Mitch Trubisky, who's the guest on this show? Great interview coming up. He diced the Bears' defense up. Uh, I mean, it just shows. Listen, people are going to probably listen to this interview and be like, "Why didn't you go harder on Mitch?" I've always been pretty consistent with Mitch in that. I, I didn't think he was the guy, but I also thought Nagy deserved a shitload of blame. And then you see him with a play caller like Brian Dable. And obviously it's preseason, but they were running tempo, and he looked fucking awesome. He looked honestly like a first-round quarterback. He did. He, he looked that good. And I'm convinced that this year he's going to get in a couple times in some blowout games. He's going to look just as good as he did in this preseason game. Honestly, he doesn't even need to get in anymore. Just based on, on what he showed against the Bears today, at the end of the season, there's going to be a team – like the Eagles, yeah, that's going to go out and be like, hey, Mitch might be the guy. He was a first-round pick, remember? And then they're going to get him, and he's going to be good if he has a good play caller. Yeah. I, it's also crazy to look. Obviously, Justin Fields changed everything, but it's crazy to, to think that Ryan Pace, there was a moment in time where he said to himself, Andy Dalton 
present day is better than Mitch Trubisky present day, which is just not true. Absolutely not true. It's not true. So, and and now they're doing the song and dance because Matt Nagy keeps saying Andy Dalton starting week one. I I get it. People are saying, well, you don't want Aaron Donald to you know kill Justin Fields. Guess what? Every team's got grown men playing. You, I mean, like if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, right? Like you got to get him in there. I think they're just doing it because they have to figure out a way to make it seem like ten million dollars to Andy Dalton wasn't a mistake. Yeah, that's part of it. I also think part of it is Matt Nagy like told Andy Dalton in the recruiting yeah, process, right. You're going to get the starting job next year. So I I know that J- Justin Fields will get will be the starter by the end of the year, but when he gets up in fr- front of the media and says we got to see what Andy Dalton looks like in the regular season, yeah, we, why we've why? never seen that before? Yeah, why never seen it before? We've it's seen big, it in the preseason. Listen, they're the knowns, the good. unknown knowns, and the unknown unknowns, and that's what Andy Dalton is. Let me just say, I should have said this to start. Andy Dalton, very nice guy. Okay. Very nice guy. Very nice guy. Also, no offense to Andy. No offense to Andy. You know what? I, I had like a little mi- mini Peter King moment this weekend when Justin Fields said, like, will everybody please stop chanting my name when Andy Dalton's in the game? It's disrespectful to Andy Dalton. I was like, I fucking love Justin Fields yes. for saying that. Yes. Like, that's that's a big time old man sports journalist take to be like, this guy's got all the intangibles because he said the right thing yeah, in he, front of a microphone. Yes. Uh, I, I absolutely fell in that trap. I'm like, yes, Justin Fields is the truth. He's got it. Yeah. And 59 on the bill should be in jail. That hit was, that was bad. Brutal. That was bad. And was also, his helmet not strapped on. It's, I, it sucks too. That hit happened after he said the game was slow. Yeah. After one preseason, can't game. say that. So you can't say that. That guy was can't a little bit say faster. That. Yeah. Uh, I a also, little faster. I also think that. Um, well, the, the other big news was Mike Vrabel tested positive for COVID. Oh. Or set out. Let me rephrase that. Mike Vrabel said that he tested positive for COVID. Now, if I was an NFL veteran or a head coach, I would probably say that in like week two of the preseason too, just so I didn't have to go to camp yes. for the last couple of weeks. If yes. I was already like cemented in my place. Yes. But he said that he tested positive, and then there were a lot of pictures that came out of him being very close with Tom Brady, mm. who's playing in the week half game, the uh, the Thursday night game. And he's elderly. And he's elderly. And I don't know if TB12 method is friendly to horse dewormer, mm. but um, I don't know. It's something to keep an eye on there. Okay, that is something to keep an eye on. Um, only other thing I had was, I again, this is preseason, so we're not going to freak out about everything, but one team that I f- kind of forgot about, you know how we always are like, the Texans are really going to play a season? Mm-hmm. The Falcons are going to be really bad. Like, really, really bad. You think so? Yes. Arthur yes. Smith, man. Yes. No, they're going to be Thickless really bad. Cage. They're going to be really bad. So when you have a brand new head coach, you can like put your finger in the air and see which way the wind's blowing, and you can make some a, a couple like really big judgments on people that uh, you never really have to answer to long term. But I'm ready to say that I think Nick Sirianni is going to stink as a head mm. coach. I think he's going to be because he's already yeah. he's trying to do the thing. He's he thinks that he's Belichick already, and he's like, oh yeah, Jalen Hurts. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's not going to play last second. Like all my starters, and he Jalen Hurts might have had like a stomach thing going on. Yeah, but he pulled like a bunch of his starters last second without telling anybody. Now as a gambler, I'm upset with that because I was not informed ahead of time. Correct. But you can already see him like trying to play the games. He did the whole rock, paper, scissors thing, mm-hmm. which seemed like he was outsmarting himself a little bit. Did you see that stat where they had him side-by-side, side, Belichick and Sirianni, and it was like Nick Sirianni, 40 years old, Bill Belichick, 47th year in the NFL? Yeah. It's like, oh, Jesus <laughs> yeah. Christ. <laughs> Although they do have Flacco. Flacco looks pretty good. Yes, they do have Flacco. Uh, but I'm not ready to say definitively whether or not Arthur Smith's going to be a good head coach. Yeah, no, I, I don't think that they're in a, re- a total rebuild. So I'm not going to blame mm-hmm. whatever. I just know that the Falcons are not. Like, think about it. They were bad last year, and they got rid of their best player. Yeah. Julio Jones. Yeah. I mean, Calvin Ridley's really Wait, good. But, how many number one picks do they have on offense? Uh, a lot probably still, still because like, they obviously got Kyle Pitts, who's going to be good. They've got like nine or ten probably. I just think they're going to be really bad. Yeah. Uh, and then let's see what else is going on. Oh, out west. The Chargers, yes, they look pretty good. Baby Braun, Derwin James, mm-hmm. that was an all-time tweet from LeBron on Friday. He's just taking everyone. He was like, anyone with the last name James yeah. is uh, now officially in my family. Yeah, he yeah. took Justin Fields over. Derwin James, Kevin James, mm-hmm. Rick, bring him on. Rick James, RIP. I tried looking up the uh, UTEP thing, and the only thing that came up when I searched UTEP basketball gambling, three UTEP players no. kicked off team for gambling in 2014. So mm, it's no. not... I don't think it was any sure? I think it was after spread? that. Yeah, I searched spread. So. Against the spread? You really? Yeah. If oh. I search this and I find it? Then I'd 
Man up and say I'm wrong. Okay. You should just search Big Cat's tweets for UTEP. Yeah, because that's I, where yeah. If I just do Barstool Big Cat yeah. UTEP, I probably tweeted. Uh, it. Also, Trey Lance, I think, is going to be the king of the new fun quarterbacks mm -hmm. because he's going to have some like shitty, shitty turnovers, and then he's going to have some awesome throws sprinkled in and some great runs and some great runs. He's yeah. just going to be fun to watch. Yes, yes. Um, all right, other things, other sports. We have to at least acknowledge uh, Miguel Cabrera, five hundred. Uh, what do you got, Jake? You tweeted in 2017, 14 in a row against the spread. There we go. Yeah. Okay. There we <laughs> Thank go. You for the help. It's easy. That was. Yeah, I mean, there's no chance Big Cat would not have tweeted. And about they that. weren't good. Yeah. Like, I was looking I for like, articles. Well, you find their record. <laughs> they weren't good. That was the best part. They were just a covering machine. It was a great ride. You get one of those. It's like, uh, it's like uh, Point Break. You just a fifty year storm. Mm -hmm. You just got to get out there and fucking surf it. Go to know? Bondi Beach, baby. Just when UTEP basketball starts covering fifteen spreads. and seventeen. Yeah, they yeah. were so bad, <laughs> but they covered fourteen in a row. That's insane. A fifteen and seventeen team, um, fifty year storm. Uh, all right, so yeah, Miguel Cabrera, five hundredth home run. He is so uh, the list of guys that have five hundred home runs and two and at least two batting titles. What is the list? How many people? Two batting titles, 500 home runs. Uh, Three. It's two. Ted Williams and Miguel Cabrera. That's pretty insane. Whoa. If he gets, he's he's like 50-ish hits away from 3,000 hits. If what he gets 3,000 hits, the 500 home run, 3,000 hits, 300 average club is Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, Miguel Cabrera. That's insane. Jesus. Like, that's a, like obviously, Miguel Cabrera's been doing it for so long, so you kind of forget. Uh -huh. But that's insane company. He also, I went and looked. He's got a fun, like, baseball reference page. He went 10 straight years of 100 RBIs, 25-plus home runs, and over 300 average. 10 straight years. It's pretty. We need to respect Miggy Cabrera. Yeah, I know. Man. Like, it was just, yeah. it was one of those weird things. Like, he see him hit his 500th home run. I feel like he's, the one ding on him is, is he's been in MLB for so long that he, I think he truly is a hundred pounds heavier than he was when he was a rookie. So you're like, oh, he's fat and slow. But he's also so, like 19. He was like, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. He was 18. Yeah, it's crazy to look at it. But he has been exceptional, Hall of Famer, obviously. But whenever you say like, oh, his company is him and Ted Williams, or his company is him and Hank Aaron and Willie Mays, that's fucking insane. Mm -hmm. Also, so respect an, Miguel Cabrera, an all-time baseball chin guy. Yeah. Great chin. Yeah, and he just, I don't know, he's got a fucking awesome swing. Miguel Cabrera, shout out Miggy. Good smile, too. Yeah, any Miggy is cool, too. Mm -hmm. You know? They just They just feel like they're that you can party with them. Uh, all right, other sports stuff that we got to talk about. Speaking Anything. of 50-year storms, Hurricane Henry's here. Oh, yeah. Which is a great nickname for Hank. Like if, Henry. Or like single Hank getting messy with it, hitting yeah. the town in Hoboken. Hurricane Henry's in town. Getting everyone wet? Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. There's Bring fucking mop puddles, ladies, dude. <laughs> fucking two two feet of standing water. Yeah, get some at the bar in Hoboken. <laughs> you get you're, fucked you're by Henry. Out, <laughs> get some Hank. A bit. I just I want to see Hank, I want to see Hank fucking Hank's. Yeah, I know. PFT is obsessed <laughs> with Hank's sex life. Not like lit. I don't want to actually see it. I just want to. No, I think, I, I want, I think you do. I want to be in the presence <laughs> of of the glow. Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> um, yeah. How how great was that? That. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking Welcome Back New York concert got canceled by the most si – since they started recording rain uh, accumulation, it was the most rain that's ever happened in an hour in New York City history. Mm -hmm. During the Welcome Back New York concert. Mm -hmm. Billy was walking home in his underwear with his cousin Dale. Yeah. Uh, and holding his pants above his head. I'm actually concerned about you, Billy, because – that water is not clean. No, and you were just going skin on skin. No, the water, the, the water was so deep and coming down so fast. It was actually like pretty clean. Billy's also built for this because I don't know if you guys saw Billy going through the airport uh, on Thursday, but <laughs> it's stolen valor. No, it's I, not. Yeah, it is. It, I took a picture. It was kind of a creepy picture. I was, it was. It was when he was at the urinal. But my, uh, <laughs> I'll post it tomorrow. Is my if you if you saw Billy walking through an airport. You would absolutely thank him okay. for his service. It's a no, 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 no question it's about a it. Look hiking at hiking backpack. What about your pants, though? Okay, yeah, I don't, I, I, where's wore Billy? I don't see Billy. Camo cargo. Yeah, where are camo you? cargos, like a tactical backpack. It is a hiking he's got, backpack. He's got uh, military boots and military Crocs. It was and grit. then the shades of a sniper. <laughs> it's a. It was Grit Week. I had no idea what we were getting into on Grit Week, so I packed Wait, and prepared. I, we, we might have to like take out an insurgency. I, Has I, anyone ever thanked you for no. your service? 
works. Because I don't actually like that's such an asshole thing. To no, do. I, like, I don't think you're actively doing it. It's but I think terrible you, to say that. It's like you know sometimes when you you'll get dressed and then you'll get to work and you'll be like, whoa, I'm wearing like all blue or something. Whoops! Like you got dressed and you're like, whoa, yes. I look like a, a four tour Afghanistan. Fan. No, so Whoops. yeah, at in that picture, I do realize that I was <laughs> my tactical my tactical hiking boots <laughs> were tied to my hiking backpack with my cr my camo crocs uh -huh. attached and i was also yep. wearing camo cargo pants that was a little too much a lot of digital camo i'll put and up a poll boots, tomorrow if it's stolen valor or not the boots you have on right now those are okay. also inching closer to stolen valor <laughs> there's, there was one foot of water Slash outside Yeezys. my yeah. Yeah. yeah i actually yeah. i actually convinced i was like liam liam was like oh are those yeezy boots or what what would happen never mind it was a funny story they're not easy boots. We need to get, I don't remember that happening yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah. We need to get Billy involved in the in the new search for the Jeopardy host. Yes. But you but you wouldn't be allowed to like read any of the clues beforehand. By the way, that like the cancel culture for Mike Ri Mike Richards? Mike Richards. Mike, yeah. Yeah, Michael AP. Richards. He yeah, like he but also they should have just said you can't have it because you gave it to yourself. Right. Like you're a douchebag for that. Right. It's the it's the Dick Cheney method of I'm gonna find the the best candidate. Oh <laughs> what wait, the fuck? it's me. And actually, Mike Richards might be the least racist of all the candidates because he fired himself. Yeah, that's true. He did. He said he, he, <laughs> he took he withdrew himself. I like I, I I read the story and I was ready to get very upset because it's like if there's anyone who's like hey, don't you know. Ding everyone for something they said on a podcast nine years ago. I'm 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 down with that. Mm -hmm. But then I realized that he hired himself. I'm like, fuck this guy. Yeah, he's. A I think that the only reason people dug into anything else that he said is because he hired every everyone hated him. Yes, to begin with. Okay, and so, so like, he should have realized that. Yeah, so yeah, you got a big target just, on your back. They should have just said no for that and just left everything else out. Be like, dude, you can't hire yourself for a job that everyone wants and like you're following they should have actually let him be the host for like two weeks then fired him yeah because then it takes the pressure off the next the guy. next guy exactly you know? and now it's still the guy that follows up alex trebek right it should, it should actually be billy just writing questions right before the show he should get to listen to a joe rogan podcast and then write down all the facts that he learned and then those are the questions <laughs> on the show and every time somebody picks a category it's like jamie pull up uh, elk for 400, please. <laughs> All right, let's do our who's back of the week, and then we're going to get to Mitch Trubisky, then we got Mount Rushmore Buildings. Uh, who's back of the week brought to you by the Cash App. The Cash App is back. Buying stocks on the Cash App is back. You can also invest uh, and buy and sell Bitcoin on the Cash App. It links directly to your bank account. If you've been saying, hey, I want to get into crypto, I want to buy some Bitcoin, well, it's one button with the Cash App, so go download the Cash App right now. Uh, download it and enter the referral code Barstool. You receive ten dollars for free and ten dollars to ASPCA when you download the Cash App from the App Store, or Google Play Store today. So thank you to our friends at the Cash App. Henry, who's back? Hurricane Henry. Uh, CM Punk. Yes, is back. So back. Came back in the A and AEW yep. wrestling on Friday night to an unreal, one of the best pops I've ever heard. That's me. Uh -huh. You know, I'm that's. I'm not really too familiar with wrestling. No, he worked no, no, no. into a shoot. I watched it after an unbelievable video, which apparently is a pop. Yeah, no, I watched it after on Saturday, and it was incredible. I I will admit that, like, for far too long, I watched Monday Night Raw, or at least kept my eye on it, expecting CM Punk to come back for like probably about a year and a half there. So it's good to finally have him back. I went back and listened to the interview you guys did with him because I was kind of forgot why. Why do people? I understand he's a wrestler, he's a good wrestler, but why do people love him so much? He I was, think because he he was like, he would not follow rules from Vince. Yeah, he was like anti Vince big time. He's like kind of kind of people's champ kind of thing. Yeah, straight edge, straight edge, straight well. edge. Yes, yes, and a cool guy, like a cool guy. He might be more. He also was one of those guys, one of those wrestlers that had a personality as well outside of outside of the ring. Is you know what I mean? And he he came up in like. You know, doing different type of like it wasn't like he was just boom one day on WWE being a star. He was so the people's champ. He's also like technically very good. Yes. At wrestling. Oh, like, yeah. oh Like yeah. he's extremely good at it. Whereas I've seen this argument a lot of people being like, "Well, WWE isn't about wrestling. It's about the entertainers." That's, that's why they don't uh, call them wrestlers. They call them name? superstars. The other Vince. Fuck. What's his name? Foster. Vaughn. No. The guy who basically created the Attitude Era. It's escaping me. I apologize. Vince Gill. 
Mm. I, I no. ran out of Vince's. Mm. There's another Vince. There's. Did you see that Vince McMahon might sell WWE? I can't no. imagine. That. Who's going to buy? Uh, I don't know. Tony? Don't know. Big Tone? I think Tony's Ooh. just trying to like take over WWE. Like, I don't think he wants to buy him. I think he wants to dominate him. Got it for you. Yeah. R- Russo. Yes. Vince Tony, Russo. Vince Russo. Yes. He, he was the one who basically upped the Attitude Era and the storylines and all that stuff. Uh, okay, PFT, you're who's back. Oh, I had another one. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, hey, no, it's go ahead. Right. no, 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 please. It is, it is just it who's is back. Your no, 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 it would make no, no, it very happy weekend. if you were to no, say no. another who's Hurricane back. Hurricane Hank. Nope. Let's go. It's Come right. on, Henry. No, you have to do it now. No, no I'm not happy. I don't I'm wanna... not happy. Okay, all right. <laughs> It'll make you happy if I do it. And, and I need an alarm where I'm not happy. <laughs> uh, milk is back. Oh, yeah. The milk crate challenge. Uh... It's incredible. Has just taken over the world by storm this weekend. It's just you know people trying to climb up milk tr- milk crates up and then climb back down. Most people are falling on their backs, falling on their face. I just saw one a few seconds ago where a guy was up on top in the middle, like you know ten feet in the air, and, and two kids just kicked the crate at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, he fell over. It's the most send dangerous it, viral SB, video please. stunt that I've seen in a very long time. It seems like ninety nine percent people that do it end up fracturing at least one vertebrae. It's it was basically meant for my likes and sensibilities it, in terms of injuries. It's like I can't get enough of it. You remember the run your friend over with a golf cart challenge from a few years ago? I also That's, love that, even though it was it, very bad. It reminds, don't do it, but it reminds me very it, much of this me. milk crate challenge thing. <laughs> was, and by the way, don't do that. A lot of people send me if you do. A lot don't. of people just have milk crates laying around, I guess. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought milk crates were a thing of the past. Yeah. Are we still drinking great, milk? I feel a like great restaurants. Thing. Yeah, I feel like restaurants are still in, in the call. Milk, milk crate. Game. Restaurants for sure. I mean, it's a great like thing to mm-hmm. have. Sit on a milk crate, although they fucking hurt to sit on. Can you uh, still see your legs? I'm gonna find this video. Okay. okay. Uh, Is that it, Hank? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I actually had. So I'm very happy that you said that. I'm really happy, one. even though I had uh, milk uh, as one of my who's backs of the week. I'm glad that Hank said it, and mm-hmm. not me, because it made us happy. Yeah. So thank you, Hank. You're welcome. Um, so my other who's back, I'm just going to go my other who's back of the week is Sturgill Simpson. Mm. Dropped an album on Friday. It's awesome. Some people are like, oh, I don't like it. It's the ballad of uh, Dude and Juanita. And it's a story. So you have to listen to it in order. It's like Trapped in the Closet? And it tells, it's it, a lot like Trapped in the Closet. Yeah, <laughs> exactly almost. Illegal. Um, but yeah, it's it's really good. If you haven't heard illegal it. Illegal myself. <laughs> listen to it, but skip the fucking song about the dead dog. Skip the song about Sam. No, you how sh- could you? You, should, you just said it's like trapped in the closet. You should not be allowed to write a song about a dead dog. It's it's. I, I think can't country. To it. I think country ish. You can country adjacent. Let, Tipper Gore fucked up when she put the little sticker on the front of albums for explicit content. Yeah. Because somebody said the f word twice, but they don't have a sticker if somebody it, sings about their dog that died. Isn't there a website that has that where it's like it, it does this movie have a dead dog? There should be. I'm pretty sure there is. Because I remember House of Cards started with that dog getting hit by a car. I was like, I'm out. Yeah. It's such a life hack, honestly. Just write a song about a dog that died. Yeah. And then people... I, Get everyone You sad. know what? Maybe the next Pup Punk out, Pup Punk, we should do all songs about dead dogs. Yeah. That would be a real party just, starter. Just jer- <laughs> tear jerkers. Uh, all right. My Who's Back is uh, similar. To, it's going to concerts. So Bubba and I went to Dead & Company on Friday night. Awesome concert. John Mayer is one of the best guitars, I don't know, of, of all time, maybe. I don't know. He's, He's fucking really incredible. Really good. Incredible. Um, they play a little slow, but John Mayer keeps them keeps them going. Also, I learned a good lesson because I was on the fence. I decided to go, like, two hours before the concert. It was like, you know, I, I, I was away for Grit Week, kids and everything, like, want to be around and all that stuff. So they were obviously in bed. But I went to the concert, and I found out that the lesson is – being a responsible father is not skipping the concert. It's turning down the mushrooms at the concert. Mm. That was a big, like, I was very proud of myself because I wanted to do them, but I said no. Yeah. So that I could be up at seven in the morning the next day and be, a, you know, an attentive father. What about so credit to me for not doing the mushrooms? What about the marijuana cigarettes? That is a different category. <laughs> that's just, that's just being, that's just like you said it's, it's just one song no right? you like you said with Betty the Butcher you it would be it, it would be like I would be a bad party guest yes it would be impolite not people to. would think I was an, an art well it's not even just about being a party guest you're part of the art if yeah. you think about Dead and Company concerts I've, I've only gone to see The Dead I haven't seen uh, Grateful Dead or Dead and Company but I have to imagine that 
the art isn't just the music that's on stage, right? It's the community. It's yeah. everybody oh, there yeah. is actively participating in the event. Therefore, like, it's up to you to kind of, like, make the art as good as possible for those around you. Yes. So you had to smoke. And probably, yeah, I mean, it, it was funny because I actually said that to Big Ev, our coworker who was there. He took out a marijuana cigarette and mm -hmm. passed it to me. And Reefer. As you do at a Dead & Company concert, I pass it to the people next to me. And I turned to Big Ev and I was like, we may never get that back. Because it just, it went forever mm -hmm. the trips it went around the sun mm -hmm. but that's just what you got to do when you show up to a party you can't be the fucking it'd be like michael scott when he had, uh, when he smoked the clove i smoked the clove <laughs> at the alicia keys concert yeah. <laughs> one time i was at a uh, at a poison concert <laughs> what a great show and this dude elbows me in the side and he i'm like 17 years old he elbows me in the side hands me a joint and standing to my left this is just by total happenstance to not plan this out my uh my social studies teacher was sitting next to me <laughs> in the seat and i turned him down i was like i i can't i can't do it and uh he he takes the joint out of my hands because like i held it for a second i passed passed it right back he was like next time a 53 year old retired marine hands you a, a joint you fucking smoke it do you understand i was like sir yes sir yes i can't yes. do it and then i later saw my social studies teacher getting blazed out of her yeah, mind so i was like what are you doing? i should have hit that yeah, joint you're a narc yeah but either way concerts are back dead and company was fucking awesome it was great to be back at a concert bubba you thought so too they fucking shred yeah john mayer is so the the end of the first set was like amazing yes. i texted you about it john yeah. mayer is just he's out of this world so also with concerts being back just um just crowds in general have been back and more so fights and crowds yeah are back again there's there's such a, a large number of fight videos that have come out in the last couple weeks i have to think that there's something else going on here well no i think it's honestly people just have gotten back into it and like they're basically making up for lost time that's why you see it in preseason games right now which usually i feel like preseason games more family friendly like not as much you know high stakes but i think everyone's like we missed an entire year of bashing each other's skulls in yeah we have to make up for it so that we can basically reset it so when the regular season starts we're back to zero. And again, we're we're totally fine with brawls in the stands, just no head punches. You yeah. should be allowed to just beat the shit out of everybody's body. But it's not just preseason. It's also French soccer. The Malice at the Palace documentary is big. Yep. I don't know. I just feel like they're they're getting ready to enact fun control policies yes. on us in the stands. Hank, I just watched that video. It was incredible. Thank you. That guy got fucking smoked by the crate. These are like... This is... Someone... I feel... Personally, I want to personally thank whoever created this because oh my god, it really is. I could watch these forever. I actually Hank sent me the like first one, and what my first thing I said to you was, "Where give me more?" <laughs> he was like, "Just scroll down on the thread." I was like, "No, but I need more than that." Uh, Jake, your who's back of the week? My who's back is sportsmanship. Oh, oh good, good. So love it. I think you guys are actually going to be surprised with my take on this. Oh! The Lily World Series, as we know, it's going on. There's some great things going. Mm. Can't take that away from mm -hmm. the kids and the coaches. The high five of the, of the opposing pitcher yeah. is over the line. How? And I don't, I don't support it. Yeah, it is a lot. Well, the, the video, so the kid, this kid gave up a home run, maybe 400 feet, yeah. uh, like dead center, absolute bomb. And they were down like 20 runs already. <laughs> and the pitcher runs up to home plate oh. and high fives the, oh. the batter as he's running around third. Did uh. you also see Coach K make an appearance? No. There was the coach. Oh, yes, yes. The, the coach. All right. So I actually Wait, was, what? I was the, watching this game. And I was, this, it was This shocking. is good, though. No, you're about to no, say. it's not. No, it's not. It's no, better it's than not. the high fiving no, of the This pitcher. coach for the Florida team, the, they throw a no, the, the other team throws a no hitter against them. The kid celebrates his no hitter. Like before he can even get to his teammates, the coach, the opposing coach, is walking onto the field shaking his hand. Like, doesn't let the kid have a moment, like a dog pile, whatever it may be. He's fucking in there. And so I was watching this game. This coach, I don't. Let me explain it. And you guys can tell me if this is over the line. So they told the story about this coach. He started coaching Little League when his son was four. He has been coaching Little League for 30 years. His kids are all grown up. So he's coaching a team of kids. But he stuck around after his stuck kids Stuck around left. after. Okay. His goal in life has been to get to Williamsport. He was on a vacation or maybe a travel baseball team, whatever it may have been, a couple years ago. They went to Williamsport. He refused to go in 
because he said he wanted to get there with his team. So he went there on a trip. Yeah. Not on. And he okay. refused to go in because uh -huh. he's like, I want to earn it. Mm -hmm. Little league coach. Yeah. I mean, too listen, much. You got to have you got to have passion for something. <laughs> when they said it, they said it like it was a touching story. And I was like half listening to it in the background. I was like, wait, what? This guy's treating like Williamsport as an adult with no kids on the team. <laughs> like it's the Stanley Cup. Yeah, that guy. It's a, a little bit of a psycho maneuver right there. <laughs> it's so that was I, the you, should, coach you should honestly came on. you should not be allowed to coach Little League. If your children are not in that age group anymore, yeah, agreed. You should, that's not a career. Like you can stay okay, on. Being for, a little league coach is not right. a job that you have for the rest of your life. You don't retire uh, from becoming a little league coach. I think it's either you have a kid who's who's still about to hit that age. So if you have like multiple kids and one kid, let's say, is like fourteen, and you have a kid that's eight year old, it's mm -hmm. like, well, he's gonna be here, yeah. so you can stick around, yes. or you can stick around for like a year or two, maybe if it's like a cohesive unit. You love the kids, whatever. Stick around for the kids after, you. but his. They were like, yeah, his son is is like thirty three. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah, it's a, it's a good rule of thumb if you don't have a kid in that age bracket or like just it, coach high school. You have to have <laughs> just coach high school. Y high school is normal. Yes, you 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 can do like a, a career as being a high school coach. Right, absolutely. Yes, when you're that's a about like, normal thing to do. Like sixth graders. Yeah, really strange. Yeah, really strange. Whatever. So congrats to that guy. I think they got so, yeah. bounced. Bottom line. I think sorry, too much. sorry, you went sideways Jake, on that. But you, no, I was, okay. I was like shocked when I heard. You that. know what you would do? You would hit a home run, and then like after you touched home, you'd jog out to the yeah. pitcher's mound and high five the pitcher. You'd give him the ball back <laughs> and be like, "Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just be, be like, like, hey, just no. want to let you know, you threw that one really well. Yeah, they no. want another try. I hit this one 500 feet, and they won in Cooperstown. But I want you to have it because I, I wouldn't have been able to hit that home run without you doing your half <laughs> of the job 50, too. 50. I love sportsmanship. <laughs> I love double sportsmanship, but sportsmanship. After you're getting Jake would have signed the is, ball for him. It's too much <laughs> Here, for me. Take this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Billy, you're who's back. My who's back is the Yankees. They're on a nine game oh, win streak and yes. getting back into wild card contention. They swept the Red Sox the past week and that was very satisfying. Hank. While we were on the Grit Week road trip with multiple Red Sox fans. One and oh in games we've won starting Friday. One and oh in games we've, we've won we've, starting Friday. I've watched. <laughs> games I've watched. Okay. Wait, didn't they lose? Oh, you didn't watch Saturday. No. Got My it. other... <laughs> <laughs> was... You were locked in. <laughs> My other who's back is Rough and Rowdy this Friday. Yes. We have yes. an amazing fight card yes. that I cannot wait to go see. A surreal fight card. Pac-Man Jones will have him on the show uh, on Friday. He's going to be fighting Bobby Lang. That's the headliner. Chef Donnie, another Barstool blogger, is yes. also fighting. I'm in his fight team. I'm going to be in his corner for the fight. Uh, so is I'm, there, okay, is there a chance that war mode shows up? Like, no. what happens if there's a scrum after? I'm going to be checking on the legality of fighting in a boxing ring when you're not. I don't know. It'll have, be fine. Have you uh, given him any advice on how to get yes. into war mode? What have you told him? That's a secret for warriors. Okay. <laughs> Shut the <Nice>. fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service, Billy. I appreciate it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Can't wait. <laughs> Definitely clear your plans for Friday. It's for yes. Rough and Rowdy. Yes. $25,000 play Barcel. Contest. Oh, hell yeah. People have won the last two, so it's two for two. That's mm -hmm. fifty grand. Love it. Could be you. Love it. Um, all right, good who's backs, everyone. All right, let's get to our interview with Mitch Trubisky. Great interview. We're outside again, so you might hear some uh, lawnmowers or whatnot in the background, but that's just grit. That's grit. So we're brought to you by our friends at BetterHelp. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Life is full of stressors. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have. Your life is probably stressful. You probably don't even realize it. You might get angry at the people you love. You might be down on a certain day or a week just because that stress builds up and you don't even realize that you – could uh, greatly benefit from talking to someone. So unload the stress and get it out. Talk to someone who's completely unbiased about your life, someone who isn't going to judge you or take sides on anything when there are things you can't tell anyone or feel like you can't unload to family and friends. You need to unload it, and that's what therapy can be. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours, unload the stressors, and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised at what you might gain from it. 
see if it's for you. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash PMT. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash PMT. We actually had a listener reach out and said that they use this, and they felt a lot better. We love to hear that stuff. So if you are someone who feels a little stressed, anxious, whatever it may be, even if you just want to talk to someone, BetterHelp.com slash PMT, and you get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash PMT. I actually have a, a listener testimonial. They reached out. They said, hey, part of my take, guys. Thank you for advertising for BetterHelp. Um, my uncle and my mother have conspired to put a hit out against me, and I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety having to look after my nephew and my uh, uh, boss's brother, Richie. Yeah. And so uh, dealing with all these and passing out behind the wheel – uh, it's really put me in a better headspace. So, thank so if you. you thought you weren't going to get a Soprano spoiler in the BetterHelp read, <laughs> there it was. BetterHelp.com. It's not really a spoiler. PMT. It's all in the first season. BetterHelp.com slash PMT. Here he is, Mitch Trubisky. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. He is a uh, quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, former quarterback for the Chicago Bears, formerly my quarterback. It is uh, brought to you by Coors Light. It is the one and only Mitch Trubisky. Uh, oh, wait. Mitchell, What's up? should we do Mitchell? Either one, either okay. one. Okay, uh, Mitch, thank you for joining us. We appreciate Thanks it. For me. I'm now. So the entire th- interview has been thrown off by the fact that you have a bag next to you with something in it. Wait, let's just start with grit. Now, this is how bad you've thrown me off. Let's start with grit. What does grit mean to you? And then we got to get to the bag. Grit means just the ability to overcome any obstacle, no matter what. Um, you just you like hard circumstances because you know it's just going to make you stronger and you can overcome them. And uh, the grittier the better, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so, now let's talk about the bag. Right. So you threw everything off. So uh, you played in maybe the best football game of the entire, <laughs> maybe ever, <laughs> the the Nickelodeon wild card game. Did you get a yeah. chance to go and, and watch the broadcast of it after the fact? I saw I saw some highlights, and it, yeah. was, it was really cool. I should probably go back and watch the whole thing. But uh, yeah, I have I brought something with me today. So let's do it. Like, let's just look. do it. I, I seriously, I was gonna bring it up like the last thing I was gonna bring up with this, but. The fact that you have this, so it is. The he's Mitch is taking award. out the MVP award. Oh my God! Holy it's shit! It's majestic. So what's it's actually a beautiful trophy? It is really. Dope. Is, is it the Nick value? Some days player? I'm like, I don't. I, I'm not sure how I got it. I think I have you guys to thank for a lot yeah, of it. Yeah, so, I'm say, like, if the people wanted me to have it, I mostly mean, us. That's, so that's yeah, why it's in my position. Walk us through that because obviously the game sucked. You know, Bears lose. What? Who t- <laughs> first told you that you won the MVP? <laughs> I was, uh, they just told me and they they were like, I was like, oh, cool. Is there like a uh, trophy or something? I was like, (laughs) it it was tough because like it was emotional. The season just ended. Like we lost the game. Like it it was a rough game, honestly. And uh, they're like, you won something. I thought they were just messing with me. (laughs) I was like, what? the? And and MVP sounds like MVP. I was like, there's no way you you can't win an MVP like with, with a game like that. And uh, no, the MVP, the Nickelodeon uh, valuable person, I guess. And I was like, how do I qualify for that? I was like, I don't know. They voted for you. I was like, all right, well, thank you, I guess. I was, and then uh, a couple months later, this shows up uh, to my door. I'm like, wow, this is a pretty dope trophy. Incredible. So I'm going to put it up on the mantle and uh, proud. Uh, it's just cool. So, yeah, it's beautiful. You're, so everyone who voted, thank you. Yes, I really appreciate yes. it. You're probably the... Uh, the first and only person to win that trophy. They might retire, or they might at least retire the online voting portion. Yeah, it's of one the, of one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, yeah. if there's online voting, we'll get you another one. Just yeah. somehow, if there's a write-in vote. <laughs> you don't we'll, have to be playing yeah, you in don't the have game. To be playing in the game. We will get you another <laughs> right, yeah. one. I appreciate we will it. absolutely do it. I just, I appreciate that you like the trophy, and it's, it is cool. I think we've got to get a replica made. We yeah. have to get a replica made, so we, we might yes. have to have someone like mind? mold it. Yeah, Is go. it bad luck to touch it like the Stanley Cup? No, it's yeah. a good luck. Look it's at that. It actually uh, doubles as a kaleidoscope. Oh, nobody knows. That. Oh, so that's fun. That's look, so fun. <laughs> look man, the, they keep uh, it fun at that. Nickelodeon. You could brain somebody. It's with pretty this. sick. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, we're gonna get a replica made, so we'll have to oh, borrow yeah. it at some point, just to get the replica made. Of course. But this is. This is incredible. Wow. And it says right here, NFL Wild Card Game, January 10th, 2021, MVP Mitch Trubisky. Oh, my God. Wow, yeah. you look beautiful. So look out of games like of you might want to forget, I'll, I'll never forget that one. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, so. you have an MVP for life. Um, all right, so let's talk Buffalo. So you're here. Yeah. You love the city? Love it. Love it. 
Do you have a uh, best wing spot yet? Uh, I go to Barbells. Okay. Barbells is is the wing spot. But I heard you guys went to a great wing spot last night. And yep. I'm like, yep. I'm not, I'm not picky. I'm also like, if it, there's a good wing spot, I'm gonna try them all. Yeah, they're everywhere. Love, it's like love the, chicken uh, wings. The 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 bar is uh, not the bar. The uh, the floor is very high for buffalo wings. So like you can yeah. go anywhere and they're gonna be good. They're gonna be better than anywhere else you've been. Correct. So you basically. You're at a point now where you're just comparing buffalo wings against buffalo wings because they're the best around. Yes. Uh, do you miss the uh, you miss the deep dish pizza? I do. I, I miss it a little bit. Yeah. I miss it a little bit. Maybe get a little little bit this weekend. Um, yeah. Yeah. So not too revenge much. Game. You got yeah. a big time revenge game. Um, <laughs> it's on your birthday, right? And my birthday's tomorrow. The day it'll be the day after. Day after. I'm going to count birthday. that as birthday week. Happy birthday, birthday weekend. Yeah. You just celebrate. Yeah. Kind of been celebrating the whole week. So. So you're taking on your former team, pretty much on your birthday. You're going to be playing the, uh, I guess, the lion's share of the game. Is there any good reason why I shouldn't bet my entire mortgage on the <laughs> Buffalo Bills this weekend? <laughs> We're going to air this after, by the way. Is We're going to air this on Monday, yeah. so you can say anything you want. <laughs> Is there uh, there's betting on preseason games? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I guess I guess go ahead. No like, offense, why not? Let's go for question. it. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. It all yeah. seems to be building up for uh, a pretty uh, fun Saturday. I mean, birthday weekend, playing your former team. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just gonna go out there, sling it around, have some fun. So, so I'm looking forward to it. Is there what's the uh, after the game? Anyone you're not gonna talk to on the other sideline? Uh, no. Anybody who wants to come up and, and talk, I'm I'm willing to go up and, and and catch up. So there's a lot of guys that I'm, I'm super close with. Some guys I consider like brothers and family to me. They're a couple were just in my wedding and, and came to my wedding and uh, coaches that I'm still pretty close with so whoever whoever wants to talk like just <laughs> talk it up after the game and uh see how everyone's doing so okay. it'd be cool to see a lot of people i like that so i gotta ask a couple of difficult questions not difficult questions but harder questions so obviously things didn't go great in chicago uh did you like was there a point did you ever pay attention to the media and because i always thought like you it was a combo of things didn't go great but you also got a bad rap sometimes too and, and a lot more was put on your plate than probably was fair yeah i think that's the reality of the quarter position quarterback position sometimes like when you win you're going to get a lot of credit when you lose you're going to get a lot of blame and there were just some games that uh people felt that we were losing because of me and i got a lot of the blame so it just goes down that way sometimes and that's not always not the case i think there's always a, a bigger story under underneath um that a lot of people on the outside don't know about but i try not to pay attention to that I try to block it out as much as i could and uh during that last year it was pretty tough getting benched and then having to come back and then uh was able to come back in and then help my team make the playoffs so i'm, I'm proud of that but all the other negative stuff you just really just got to block out or else you're just going to go down a dark hole because with the social media and everything else these days there's just so much of that negativity out there and once you see one of it, something of it you're just going to keep going down that road until it's until it's too much you just got to block it out and try yeah. to focus on your job because yeah okay so, so much to do i had one other really difficult one this one's difficult for both of us um double doink i really thought the bears like that team was good enough to make a run to the super bowl i, I truly believe that yeah and people, I thought so too. people don't give you credit for you know driving the team back down into field goal range there at the end of the game because of the result uh afterwards like what was there tears i mean i'd hope there were tears maybe breaking some stuff i was I doing didn't, all of that i didn't cry there was no tears i think just because i was so in shock i couldn't believe it because uh if you remember that year it was just like we we're in a bunch of close games but just the team we had and how we were overcome stuff like it didn't matter what happened throughout the game it was like we knew we were gonna win and that's kind of how that game felt like it was close going back and forth all the way and then we drove down and we were kicking a field goal and i was like there's no way this is not gonna go in oh i knew it and wasn't then going it in. didn't yeah yeah and then it didn't yeah um you should have known and then that i was, was just coming. in shock yeah was it yeah. So. was it tipped it was. No, it wasn't. It was. No, it was it tipped. I think Chris Long said it was tipped. But yeah, I think they're just trying to, trying to be like, save Cody Park. Oh, he is fine. Badass Eagles. Look Whatever. at us. Fly, fly. That sucked, man. So I'm I'm formerly, formerly your quarterback, though? I can't still be your quarterback? Yeah, no, you're still my quarterback in my heart. Like yeah, roster, actually, you're right. right? You're right. Because yeah, yeah. Jay Cutler's still kind of my quarterback. Right, cool. Yeah, so you still are my quarterback. That's good. I That's just huge. didn't want Justin, who's a huge listener of the show, to like be like, what the hell did he just say? You know, so you're you're my quarterback. Yes, but right, Justin's cool. also my quarterback. Respect. Andy Dalton, nice guy, not my quarterback. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe we could talk about like a, a little bit better memory from while you're in Chicago. Uh, one of the one of the greatest plays we actually had. I think it was Luke Wilson on the show talking about the uh, last play of the Super Bowl and like how he saw you know important plays from people who were there at the time. November 29th, twenty twenty. 
against the Packers, David Montgomery, mm-hmm. the run. Mm-hmm. Do you what remember? was that like? Yeah. The, run. the run. The run. He scored? You no. Hit? No. no, no, no. It was no, like no. a 60 Didn't yard score. run. Didn't score. But it was like 58. 58. Yeah, something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like right up the second middle. Second play of the game? Yeah. Very physical. Yeah, yeah it might yeah. have been second play of the game. The yeah. run. Amazing the run. run. You could almost like hear the NFL films music playing mm-hmm. as you were watching it in real time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was from your perspective? I thought I heard some guy in the stands humming the yeah. music, actually. Yeah. yeah, Steve Sable was looking down from heaven like, holy shit, this run. After you gave him the ball, were you like, there's. There's no chance he's going to run the ball for 58 yards. <laughs> like, this is impossible. Yeah. You just hand it off, and, I mean, some, those are the best plays as a quarterback. You just hand it off, and you're like, oh, he's still going. Yeah. He's still going. He's like, ooh. Credit to you him for and playing the rest of the game after witnessing history. It was amazing, yeah. yeah. I would have broken down in tears just yeah. from the beauty of it. <laughs> now, I, I have, in all seriousness, I've, I've given you a lot of credit in the past because I think that you are, like, one of the best handoff quarterbacks. Like, really, you have a very quick step – you extend the arm. There's a, there's an art to handing the ball off. There is, a, there? There is an art. You can to be handing bad at handing the ball off, right? If you have to be bad or good at handing off the ball, I would like to be good at yeah. it. I guess, yeah. Yeah. There, I guess there's an art. You, do I make it look good? Some would say maybe. Yes. So, we do practice that a lot. Yeah. You just got to have good handoffs. Like yeah. Good, good exchanges that's what yeah. it's all about when you're yeah. when you're on the sidelines and uh you're you know throwing the ball back and forth get your arm loosened up are you a guy that has somebody who catches the ball for you and then hands you the ball or do you I like catch to, it i like to catch it for myself but then somebody you're not gonna somebody who comes up you're not gonna tell them not to catch it for you so if they want to volunteer themselves to catch for me that's fine but i just i like to get the hands going you know yeah, yeah. i like that do you still own the uh toyota camry it, it it it's it's, it's no done. longer it's no longer running. Ryan Pace bought it off you. No, it's no longer running. Oh. We had to. What was it? Were you like, hey, it. dude, chill out? Like, it's just a car. Because that's it, he just loved that car. He loved that loved car it. more than you love that car. Loved it. I mean, <laughs> it it got me from point A to point B, and that's what you want. That's so, true. I mean, uh, gonna definitely gonna miss that car. Yeah, it's it's no longer with us. That car changed history. Yeah, it did. Yeah. We're going to get back to Mitch real quick. Before we do, I want to talk to you about our great friends over at Mack Weldon. They've got a daily wear system. You're a busy guy, so stop thinking about what to wear. Embrace the radically efficient Mack Weldon daily wear system. It's a selection of clothes rooted in smart design, made with performance fabrics, and built to work together. From breathable t-shirts and polos to stylish button-ups and shorts, underwear, and beyond, Mack Weldon makes it easy for you to dress for work, leisure, and play. Wherever your summer takes you, we love Mack Weldon. Super comfortable clothes, very stylish. Again, you can wear them to work. You can wear them out to a bar. You can wear them on a date. You can wear them on a weekend. You can wear them on a lazy Sunday. They've got Ace sweatshorts. They have modern tailoring and pair perfectly with their ultra soft, ultra upgraded Pima tees. For weekend travels both near and far, their silver knit polo and radius shorts are the perfect high tech highly packable combo i'm telling you right now the ace sweatshorts if you have a girlfriend that likes to put on your clothes the ace sweatshorts are going to make her stick around for a lot longer these are perfect clothes they're super super comfortable great for laying around on the couch great for lazing about and buy some time this summer with mac weldon daily wear system for 20 percent off your first order visit macweldoncom slash take enter promo code take that's macweldoncom slash take promo code take for 20% off Mack Weldon radically efficient wardrobing. Now, here's more Mitch Trubisky. Give me a, a strengths and weaknesses breakdown from like a scouting perspective on Caleb Presley, our co- co-worker. As a quarterback, what's good? What are the things that he needs to improve on? His golf game or his like quarterback play? Quarterback he, yeah. and golf. Yeah, maybe both. Uh, his pros, confidence. Mm-hmm. A lot of Mindset, it. <laughs> morale. Yeah. Yep. Um, Grit, you gotta throw in grit. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the grittiest guys I know on the on the grit chart. Um, cons doesn't take criticism well. Mm. Doesn't take criticism mm-hmm. well. Um, he's not gonna take that criticism. Handoffs, well, yeah. he's not good at handoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Slings wants to sling at every play. Yep. Run plays not for him. Yep. <laughs> um, and he probably one of the best victory quarterbacks of all time. Ooh. So at the end of the game, you bring CP in. He's going to get the job done. Yeah, that's true. CP. Yeah. Uh, do you believe the 86? The 86. He's shot an 86. Ooh. I, I believe I'm going to believe it. Yeah. I'm a Caleb I guy, it. so I believe it, but there are people who don't I believe, believe it. it. I'm, okay. 
I believe the 86, 100%. You're a truther? No, I, yeah. there are people out there who are saying maybe the 86 wasn't real. I believe it, 100%. Absolutely, uh, he shot an 86. So he's sub-90s now, which is he's huge. He's sub-90s. He had a camera following him around, though. Right. Are we saying, like, some... Like kicked the ball a couple times. The last time he he did a video, he did a video, and he's like, a lot of people cheat in golf. That's what you're watching right now. I'm cheating. Like when he shot like a 99. Ah. So I think he kind of opened the door for himself. Gotcha. There. That was how, a mistake. How do you rank him as a friend? Oh, top two, not two. Whoa. Yeah, hundred percent. There's gonna be some people who are angry about that. I don't know who they are. I do like how That's you said That's why they like, compete. They got to compete for the top spot. Yeah. Your breakdown of Caleb is pretty much strengths, confidence, uh, weaknesses, ability. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say That's that. That's kind of what it boils That's down perfect. to a little That's bit. That's perfect. Yeah. But we love Caleb. Yes. He's, he's a great guy. I hope he's got his shoes off right now. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> I shot you with true serum, okay? And you have to tell me the God's honest truth. Was there ever a moment... I'm not going to do – I'm not going to say, hey, can we bash Matt Nagy together? I'm not going to do that. Um, I shot you a true serum, and I was like, is there ever a moment where you're like, hey, Mahomes and Watson, just chill out a little bit, just a little. With the, like, with just, the questions? Just being awesome. No, just like chill out with all the touchdown passes. <laughs> like was there ever a moment where you're like, can you not, Mahomes, for a minute? Uh, <laughs> I don't think I was like, can you not? I was like, I was just like, damn. like Yeah. That's what you want to be doing. Yeah, yeah. That's what you want to be doing. Because that's yeah. part of it. It's like it, Mahomes is probably going to be the best quarterback of all time, and that's like you, you don't get to pick where you're drafted. For sure, and you don't. Mahomes then just decides like, hey, I'm going to be the best of all time. Oh, cool. Just runs right. up the score every week. Yeah, by that logic, every other team should have traded up and picked him, right? That's true. You just that's never know. That's true. Mm-hmm. Good point. Great point. Great point. Were you actually surprised on draft day? Yeah, very surprised. I had no idea Chicago was going to draft me. They, uh, they traded up. We had one secret meeting in Chapel Hill, which is the only time I met with them before. So I had no idea they were even interested because they didn't even say. And then uh, they forgot to call me on draft night. And so when they traded up to the number two spot, uh, we were looking around the draft room. We're like, oh, it's nobody's phone ring. Nobody in here is getting picked. And then Roger Goodell says my name. And I was like, oh, OK, Shut here up. we go. That's how you found out. That's how I found out. Yeah, that's how, that's I found how John out. Fox found yeah. out, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's got to be. That almost has to be surreal, like seeing your name on TV. It was very exciting. Yeah, it was very exciting. It was crazy. Yeah. Very unexpected. Uh Very unexpected. So huge surprise. It was was a great time. Great night with my family. I bet. um, Celebrating that. CP was was there? He was, yeah. Yeah. The secret meeting. How does a secret meeting get arranged? Uh, Basically, they come to Chapel Hill. They work you out, and then you have a dinner with uh, coaches, Mm -hmm. and you you just don't let the media know about it. They're like, yeah. don't tell anybody. Ryan Pace asked don't tell to wash anybody. your yeah. car. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me see that tailpipe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <they're like, laughs> let good. me see the Camry now. Um, how much of going to UNC was decided on the colors? Because I just assume they have the best colors in all sports. They do. So I've always assumed that, uh, I don't know, conservatively speaking, 30% of all students at UNC at a given time chose UNC simply because the colors are that awesome. 100%. Were you in that boat? Were you like – I was probably like – 58% colors. Yep. <laughs> 32% campus. Yep. And then the other percentage, football and uh, academics. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love it. I honestly, if like they're that good, they, if I were if it's I amazing. were Mac Brown, I'd be like, hey, everybody you see knows these Carolina colors? blue. Yeah, you want to wear this? You want to wear this color for the rest of your life? Come here. Yeah. That's like, like that would be my entire recruiting pitch. It's not just the colors; it's the argyle too. Yes, the, the argyle, argyle pattern classic. is sweet. It's amazing. Yeah. Do you still have a lot of stuff that's Carolina blue? You know how like Jordan used to yes, wear his yes. uh, his UNC shorts underneath his game shorts. Yeah, I got some uh, UNC shorts I wear to bed. Yeah, yeah. if I went to UNC, the I first would never I wear a different a freshman. color. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's the best color ever. Damn. Um, so Big Cat asked it, uh, at first, like Mitch Mitchell. Was there a thing where, um, like, you you wanted to make a statement after you were drafted that please call me Mitchell? No. Because I... when that came out, it sounded like it was coming directly from you, and I was like, well, if he wants me to call him Mitchell, I'm just going to call him Mitch. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Like, yeah. Like I can't be told what to do. Uh, but so that that was never something that came out of like your camp. No, it was. So the whole thing was somebody found out that while well, I was just telling people like, dude, I keep getting the question like, is it Mitch or Mitchell? I was like, I don't care. And they were like, okay, what's your family call you? I was like, my family members, they call me Mitchell. My mom, dad, brother, sister, they call me Mitchell. 
but like my friends buddies like they'll call me mitch like reporters media mitch like it really doesn't matter and then like the question is just getting dragged on and out and it's just like what do you prefer and it's like i don't have a preference it doesn't matter yeah okay yeah because that became a story in its own right um, I think that just spe- speaks to like how pathetic we are yeah. as journalists where we're like, this guy wants to be called what his, what his parents call him. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> how dare he? Yeah. And then we ran with that. He's making for, like, a name demands now. He <laughs> yeah. can't do this. Um, all right. So we'll other, what other what draft want. night question. So congratulations, by the way, you just got married. So you, I won't sure. ask about current currently, but at, at any point in your life, did you love to kiss titties? <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, I didn't know that that was gonna come eventually, right? I had to ask it. <laughs> who, who tweeted that? It was one of your friends. Yeah, one of my buddies. <laughs> off, uh, he uh, he's in the White Sox organization right now. We were in a basketball tournament. Uh, so I'm from Menor, Ohio, in Cleveland. We go to Tennessee every year to play a basketball tournament, the Arby's Classic. Um, just ate so much Arby's. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Probably haven't had it Horses since. Yeah. So yeah. much. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then. Uh, so you know you're in the hotel with your buddies and you're just messing up, messing around on each other's phones or whatnot. And then uh, eight years later, I found out that <laughs> it was like a long play by that. him. Yeah. That we somebody perfectly. was just waiting on that one. They're like, oh, this guy gets drafted. This is gonna be a good one. And then it just sends off. But it's there's worst. Oh, worst way ones worse. Out there. And all so. things considered, it was like the perfect thing to be like, hey, look at what Mitch tweeted. I love to kiss titties. Yeah. <laughs> when he was like yeah, 14 years old. I actually old. gained a lot of fans from that. So yeah. it was yes. like positive in yeah. a way. Yeah, we're sex positive podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. Like, yeah. Kissing titties is the most like innocuously innocent thing yeah. that you can tweet. Smooth yeah. Time. Who doesn't? You know? Literally everybody like not even licking yeah. titties. That's that's actually like rated R. Yeah, PG, that's like you go them. to a strip club. Oh, we're gonna lick some titties. Yeah, no, no but you just kiss. You just say hi, like <laughs> like a kiss on the yeah. cheek. In yeah, Europe, see those titties. They kiss titties all the time as a greeting in Greece. Yes, that's true. Respectful thing to do. <laughs> yeah, right? it's, it's, it, it would be culturally inappropriate <laughs> to not kiss the titties <laughs> when you go to Greece. <laughs> that's a fact. Um, all right, I got one last question. This has been awesome, man. We appreciate you doing this. Uh, the mattress firm question: Unjunk your sleep. Meet a match, uh, sleep expert now, mattressfirm.com, get started. Uh, did you bring the Peaky Blinders look with you to Buffalo? Oh, so yeah, I got it. That was hard. That got was it. awesome. And we, like, got, we got Peaky Blinders fans in the QB room, so hopefully we get, like, a Peaky Blinders QB show up to the game. Yes. Get that going. I yes. love that outfit. I'm waiting that for, was... uh, what, season five or six coming out? Yes, when's, coming when's out. I think it's the last season. Hanging on to it. Yeah, I think it's the, f- the series finale. I just want Arthur to come back and start, like, Killing people again. Yeah. He got tied down with that with that woman who's like, oh, it's the devil's work at night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. And he, he was got, like, I'm off of fucking Shelby. He got pee whipped. He did get pee whipped big mm-hmm. time. Um, yeah. Which one are you? Uh, probably Thomas. Probably Thomas. Okay. Thomas Shelby. Okay. Yeah. Nice. The I leader like of the brothers. I mean, I lo- I love that show. Everyone loves that Great show. show. Mm-hmm. But yeah. All right. So I'm happy you brought that with you. Uh, we're wishing you the best of luck. I do miss you. But that's okay. You guys set we'll something catch free, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. You know, like we're, we're, it's, uh, we we got to move on. We're, we're just talking on the on the way over to the practice field that you are. I think you are poised to have a very long career. Yeah, like this is actually a big opportunity for you as a backup here. Like you, you could be in the NFL for like twelve, thirteen more seasons. That's the goal. Yeah, play yeah. as long as possible. I yeah. mean, this is what you dream of to play football at the professional level as a kid, and then to be here and. You never know what's gonna happen, you know. Mm-hmm. So happy to be out here and happy to be in Buffalo, and we'll see how how long we can play for, you know. I like cool. it. positive vibes. I love that. All positive vibes. Yes. All right. Well, the MVP, Mitch Trubisky. Thank you so much. We Thanks appreciate for me, guys. it, and thank you for bringing the trophy. Hey, you guys had the witnesses. The world had to finally see it for themselves. <laughs> it's beautiful. Hey, beautiful. In the flesh. So. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's wrap up the show. Great interview with Mitch Trubisky again. Reminder: Ryan Fitzpatrick coming up on Wednesday. Uh, it was great seeing the MVP in person. Now, I'll just say it. I thought he was going to gift it to us. Yeah, well, he <laughs> handed it to us. So did I. I really did. And I don't know if he thinks that we desperately want it. I, I wanted it. I was, yeah, no, I wanted it. I lust for I, it. I was very excited to be holding it. And uh, then we took a picture with it. And so when we took the picture, I, I still had it in my hands, but he was standing in between us. So I was like... Better let him hold it, and then we can all touch it in the picture. And then he just put it right back in his bag. So if someone has a sick 3D printer and wants to do the boys a solid and make us some replica MVPs, we would absolutely display them in the studio. Or if you're friends with Mitch, 
and let's say you've known him for a long time mm -hmm. and are very close with him, maybe played with him in college. Top two, not two. Top two, and uh, you just want to let him know that we would, we would like the MVP trophy. Yeah, it's yeah. really our. I do, I think he wants it. I don't know. Would you want it? He mentioned I want something it. about like. No, I, I, I'm saying if you were Mitch, would you want it? I don't know. I think it. I mean, hmm. You know what? The Nickelodeon At, blimp is. We is can't iconic. take it from him. As the right, the rightful, well, we could. the rightful owners of the trophy would say, we're glad that it's in a safe yeah, yeah, home yeah. with Mitch. Yeah, yeah. But that really just means that we want the fucking trophy. Yeah, no, I was very excited. It, I mean, you heard in the interview, it fucking threw me off when he he showed me in the duffel bag right before we sat down, and I was just a blabbermouth for the first like. You know, minute and a half there. I couldn't figure out the, what I was going to do. The blimp has a kaleidoscope in it. <laughs> I just wanted to say, I want it. I want it. Give me the trophy. Give me the trophy. All right. Uh, Mount Rushmore of buildings. Mm. Mount Rushmore of buildings. PFT and Billy were very excited for this one. I expect... I don't know where I'm going to go with this. I just thought it was it was a nice open-ended one. Yeah. All right. So how are we going to... We do we do numbers to decide who goes first. Yeah. Draft order. 17. Give me an 8. Billy? 69. 69? I'll do 75. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 75 already got taken. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Whoops. Three! All right. All right, PFT, what do you want the order to be? All right, so I'll go first. Okay. And then Big Cat, so it'll go this way. Okay. With Hank wrapping around at the end of it. All right. Um, now, the last time we did a Mount Rushmore, I think it was Billy. You just did it, right? There was no collaboration. No, no. Jake had the pool. That was, okay, that was a week ago. Yeah, that was a week ago. Okay, we did three lot on the road. All right. right, he's still high from Benny the Butcher. <laughs> yeah, is this is this a Hubba collaboration too? They, wh who cares? They always <laughs> are. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So right off the bat, it's always Team Hubba. Okay, Hubba. Uh, Hubba. First overall, is this one, a collaboration one? with you guys? Like, is there something? No, we need no, to know? no. Why are you asking all these questions? No, I'm very confused. I I spent way too much time thinking about what is a building. I'm sketched out. Yeah, you're sketched out. I'm sketched he's a cop. out. Okay, one one. I'm gonna go with Willis Tower. Overall, I don't, I don't know where that is. It, the Sears Tower. In yeah. Chicago. Oh. It yeah. was the tallest building in the world for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's still the tallest names. in my head. They, they, they changed it. They sold it. It's stupid. Because Sears died. Yeah. Sick building. Sounds like a cop-ass building. Um, it is a sick building. <laughs> it's an awesome it's got building. Great views. Yeah. See you can Indiana. stand. You can stand Michigan. in the in the ledge over top. Oh, that's when you stand at the scary. Like you look down at your feet yeah. and everyone yeah. takes yeah, that yeah. picture. Terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. Um, all right. I'll go. Uh, I'll go with the Superdome. Superdome. Good building. Silverdome. Remember, remember when we were there? Silverdome. Sick. I'll go with the Superdome. It's super. Uh, it houses great football games, great memories, and also saved a lot of people's lives in Katrina, right? Mm -hmm. At the at the some uh, WWE event when Undertaker lost, uh, Hulk Hogan was like, "Thank you, the Silver Dome." Silver Dome and it was yes. one of the times where everyone in the crowd was all at the same time was like, "Ugh, yeah, like you messed yes. that up." Uh -huh. Yes, yes, that Silver Dome is sick. It doesn't stand anymore, but that, I sometimes there were some sick pictures of uh, people going into the abandoned Silver Dome. Go look it up. You know what else? Spend all day looking at them. Uh, the the Astrodome had some good pictures too mm -hmm. of like weeds growing. Yep. Through it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, your guys pick. The Bass Pro Shops Pyramid. Fuck you. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Do you I mean, even know I where it is? You had. I knew you guys had something. Memphis. The amount of we stopped there on trip last had. month. There was no hype. I gave three suggestions for what Mount Rushmore and Billy no, said you buildings. You guys had buildings last week too. You're like we should do buildings. So no, we haven't been. We haven't been, been hovering it. I have not been hyping. We've not been hovering whatsoever. It. We've been hovering it. Okay, good pick. Good, great, great pick. Great pick. The yes, Pro Shop Pyramid is incredible. I'm gonna go with the real pyramids. Yeah, <laughs> pyramids of Giza. I think those count. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like the greatest, greatest mm -hmm. structural engineering ever done. P probably done by aliens. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this one's for you, PFT. Since you want to know, like, how my fuck game is going, I'll, I'll give you the building I want to fuck the most. And that would be Allegiant Stadium. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, Serves yeah. free beer. Yeah. 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 Serves free beer. Just super sexy stadium. It's okay. got now that I'm single, if I could really <laughs> just stick it in anything, it'd be the Allegiant. It's got the flame in there. Yeah. The Al Davis flame. That's yep. my new bit. All right. Mm -hmm. Jake. We're, we're going to go with the Roman Coliseum. Okay. A lot of history there. Okay. Um, kind of some fucked up history, though. 
I mean, same thing with the pyramids. Yeah, no, I guess. Yeah. I'll go with the. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll go with the White well, House. No, those aliens, dude. Give me aliens. the White House. White House. The White House. All right, lip Shit cat. Is dope. <laughs> Shit is dope. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, it's no surprise that two of my choices got taken right there. Uh, so I'm gonna go with Sydney Opera House. Mm. The clamshell design. Mm -hmm. It's iconic. Mm -hmm. I think you have to say the iconic Sydney Opera House. Yep. Um, for my next one, I'm gonna go with. The Mecca. Madison Square Garden. Mm, okay. The Mecca. Okay. Um, hmm. I have one all-time pander pick, but I'm not going to do it. Do it. Can I say it, but I'm not going to do it? No. Someone it. else could do it. What? Do it. Just do it. Pander. No, no, no. Well, there's... Uh, well, actually, I have two pander picks. All right. Send them. Should I pick one or two? Pick one. Well, you can't pick no, two. No, no. I'm saying, I'm saying pick one. I have them listed one or two. Two. It's the uh, Barstool Milton office, uh, where this this company. I don't know that that pandering works for for this. That's pole. fine. Was that a, I mean, It's where everything. That you place know, was a shit hole. Started, it was such a bad place. Was that um? Was it was it the only office inside that building, or did you share it with people? <laughs> it was an old dentist office, right? Yeah, there was other built. It was like a complex or whatever, so it wasn't. We didn't have to share the actual building with people, but there was like another business right next yeah. door. Okay, multiple the, businesses. A lot of history there birth of this company pretty much as we know it so yeah barstool milton office yeah i don't really i'm people always talk fondly about those memories i just no i mean you i had it i, perfect I had to go because, in there every yeah, day and it was I like this place is a shithole i had it perfect because i probably only went in there like 10 times total in my life so i didn't have to actually live in there like you did so i had the perfect detachment which i think most fans do right yeah you know, they have all but good memories of there. right yeah the other pander would have been even more pandering. All right. Really? Jake? <laughs> HQ2? I don't know. No. Uh, we were going to take the capital, but... Yeah, it's I not bet you were. Nowadays, yeah. we I bet you were. We're ben? not Billy? taking the Billy, capital. Billy, Billy, Billy wearing his, his we're not, camouflage We're not gear, picking the capital. about taking the capital. We're not, that we're, not pick, yeah. <laughs> we're not picking the capital. We're not. Where were you on January 6th? I was in this office watching it on TV with you guys. Oh, that's okay. convenient. We are not picking the capital, but we are taking... You already did. The Graph House. Where the Declaration of Independence <laughs> was written. That's <laughs> trash. It's not gonna, it's not gonna end up well on the graphic because no one knows that. No that's one knows. that's no. where our country started. The yeah, dude, I picked where Barstool was started. Yeah, but this country started Barstool. Meh. Boom. Uh, Leaning Tower of Pizza. Okay, uh -huh. nice. Dope. Please put it as pizza. <laughs> Dope ass building. Is that how it's spelled? Yeah. No, I <laughs> uh, and then your net worth. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Building your net worth. Yep. Ah, it's my, great. It. It's my favorite build. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Mine too. Nice. <laughs> little Gary V shit there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Love it. Think about Kill your mom getting your murdered family. every yeah. morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I start my day, and I'm very happy. Kill a anything that you love in life, <laughs> kill it all. Why build a house when you can build your net worth? All right. Last. You guys, you know, oh you know that God. this is a podcast, yeah. right? All right. Join. Do you want to? Do you want to do? Who picked Graph? <laughs> that was Billy. Oh, no. so the thing is, I thought that the original name of it was Liberty Hall. Why didn't you just say yeah, that? Yeah, no, none said of Liberty us Hall. would have corrected you. Yeah, yeah. we all would have been like, "Cool." Lib let's just <laughs> At write. At worst, that's a cool beer no, hall. It's, yeah, it's let's yeah. write it down as Liberty Hall on the no, poll. No, 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 no. You picked the Graph. I know it sucks. Fuck. How do you even spell that? G R A F F. That sounds like a. a Kind of shitty bar in New York. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Empire State Building. Okay. Oh. All right. Oh. Oh. Billy. Oh. Billy. Wow. What was that? We literally had a talk to stay away from that. Everyone who's who's anti odaniac oh will vote for you now. Or no, everyone who, the who is Odaniac, yeah. yes. Billy just dragged me into the mud. Yeah. You got uh huh. You got killed. Uh is the stadium a building? I this is yeah. what I took yeah, forever. I think that was so, so uncalled for, Wrigley Billy. Field. Okay. I'll take Wrigley Field for my last one. I literally spent <laughs> for... Uh, was that the other pander? No, the other pander... Well, go ahead. You go with your last one. I was going to take the Siegel Center. Okay. Where VCU <laughs> plays. Yeah. More life-altering nice. than a trip to Europe. No, the, 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 <laughs> ultimate, the ultimate pander was going to be the Knights of Columbus in oh, Buffalo. Okay. All right. Which 
is a sick building. They have mm-hmm. fucking 10 bowling lanes and a full court basketball. But I thought that would be like such a pay- – like the Milton office has actual meaning. Yeah. That would have been a, hey, you know, flavor of the day kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Still buy a shirt, though, please. Uh, things we missed. The Burj Khalifa. That wasn't that bad. No. I can't believe no one took the Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal is I kind of wanted to, but that, I also like, why is it so cool? Because the Taj Mahal is is basically the biggest self-bonk in the history of the world. Yeah. It was built by a horny king, Shah Jahan, and he built it because he wanted to fuck his wife so bad. Okay. She wouldn't fuck him anymore, so he's like, what if I just make this big building for you? It worked, I assume. I don't I mean, think how long did it take to build, though? Like, like way too long. She yeah. died, so he yeah. didn't get laid. I think well, it ended up being his, her, like death or burial thing too yeah it became like a tomb uh putin's palace that's like 1.3 million billion dollars bill sorry i misspoke there billion dollars uh the hoosiers gym oh that's a great building. stonehenge playboy mansion michael jordan's Uh house that he still can't sell it looks fucking sick uh let's washington monument washington monument oh patty's pub Yep, that's a good one. I didn't know if we could do fictional, but I wrote that down. The North Side Tavern in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, great one. Great building. Great one. Hogwarts. Hogwarts. Hogwarts, another fictional one. Mm-hmm. We could have done. Star. Death Star. Death Star. Well, R.I.P. It's a ship. Yeah. Too soon. Spoiler. Spoiler. Sorry. What the fuck? I haven't even seen the movie. I just know that <laughs> it blows up at the end. All right. I think that went well. I was... I, I, I Again, I'm so dumb. I think also I get like... By, bing. by Sunday afternoon, especially in a hurricane, mm-hmm. uh, I'm like, I've been dad brained so hard that when we're like buildings, I, I just sat at my kitchen table being like, is that a building? Oh, the like, sp- is the Eiffel Tower a building? The Space Needle. I think that counts as building. I don't think that the Empire's or the uh, the Eiffel Tower counts. Yeah, I couldn't. There's I was an apartment like, on the top of it. Is there? Yeah. Is that where, where the dude that French guy chill. lives? Yeah. The, the guy who created the tower has an apartment on the top there. Like, no, you're thinking about Quasimodo and Notre no, Dame. No, no, there's li- there's an apartment at the top Rings of the, the bell. of the the thing. Notre Dame could have been on that list, too. Yeah, it was the place that burnt down. Notre Dame. Notre Dame, PFT made that joke, and everyone tried to cancel oh, it. Yeah. yeah. It turns out I was right. Nobody died. Mm-hmm. Just a bunch of old French artwork got singed. Yeah, just billions, billions of dollars worth of history. Oh, no, history. <laughs> the graph building. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what does that fucking thing look like? The graph it, building. Yeah, honestly, the Declaration of Independence is overrated. We we said at that point, hey, we're independent, but we weren't even independent until we won the war. Yeah. We just it's yeah. the graph building. I'm looking I think it, it actually might be Liberty Hall. Oh no, you can't change that. Tiger Stadium. Graph. Tiger Stadium. Death Valley. Yes. yes. We Death make Valley's a big board every time. Oh, I thought you were actually gonna say De- out of it. Detroit Tiger Stadium too was an all timer yeah. with the fucking yep. uh, upper deck up against the the wall. Mm-hmm. The that, old all time. The old Look, Miami Marlins Stadium yeah. where they had the sculptures. That the sculpture. That's what it's I outside now. It's outside. Yeah. yeah, I love looking at old, old Yankee stadiums. Stadium. I love looking at old stadiums. It's fucking. It's a passion of mine. Watching people borderline die, jumping on milk crates. And old stadiums. Mm-hmm. Just give me that, and I'm a happy, happy man. Fenway Park would have been a good one, too. Yep. I don't want to go too crazy with stadiums. Yeah. Uh, what other stadiums would even be? Rose Bowl? Fenway, Rose Bowl, Wrigley. shit. I, I actually meant to write down Rose Bowl. should have Mount Rushmore Stadiums. The Orlando Airport. That. The tallest building in the world in Dubai. Oh, yeah, the, the, the Burj, Burj Khalifa. Khalifa. Yeah. yeah, that's the tallest. Oh. Yeah, but again, I when I hear tallest building in the world, I'm still like, oh, no, that's the Sears Tower. Yeah. Always will be. Huh. They should just build a series of taller and taller antennas on the top of the Sears Tower. That'd be cool. Yeah. Just uh, actually, no. Milk crates. Yeah. <laughs> just a shitload of milk crates. Dare you. <laughs> Let people jump on them. Uh-huh. All right, numbers. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick on Wednesday. Great interview coming up. 77. 99. 55. 18. 8. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, by the way, you find milk crates at the back of um, you, supermarkets. You're making this up right now. No, th- that's where they all are. Nine. Ooh. We forgot about the... Oh, recap. <laughs> Shit, my bad. Recap. Fuck, I do it on Mondays. I'm sorry. Good job. No worries. Me. Um, I actually love Billy's recap. Billy's been a fucking hoss when it comes to blogging. Everyone give Billy a handshake in the chat. Oh, yeah. Actually, I haven't done that in a long time. I the mean, handshakes? honestly, I, I love the handshakes. I haven't, I haven't been doing my job. I haven't been giving out handshakes yes. as much as I used to. Can I just say Tomorrow too morning. that I love the handshake because I love whenever 
like the young guys do something that I can figure out the meaning of very quickly. Mm-hmm. If uh-huh. that that's really the bar for me. Actually, uh, Billy Billy now prefers that you just salute him. Oh yeah, in no, the chat. Yes. No, yeah, no. just send him gifts. Oh, of salute. If you have any, if you have any picture, medals, the picture of that guy that's crying yeah. at his computer. I'm not that's trying to really steal that. Any purple hearts <laughs> lying <laughs> around? You want to pin them on him? No. please do so. Yeah, oh, tag yes. him and Chaps mm-hmm. in the I same tweet. The and say thank Whoever you. Whoever responds first is the real marine. Anyway, no, the milk crates are like. Literally at the back of every Walmart and Stop and Shop, and they're right by the loading bay. Okay, if you're okay. looking for them, good to know. Um, Usually, we're also out. <laughs> fun, that's that's got to be on the Mount Rushmore places. To smoke a cigarette though. Yes, like absolutely. out behind a grocery oh, store next yes. to. Yeah, you want to do that on Wednesday? Yeah, we could do that. First. Also, someone hit up uh, Mount Rushmore rom coms, which I think would be good as well. We got a couple a couple more weeks, so. Fun fact, Nathan Peterman has started every snap for the Raiders this preseason. That is fun. I kind of spin zone myself into thinking because Nathan Peterman had such a bad game that couple times that like when he plays, he's not scared of doing that and he might actually be good. One Can't day. get any worse. Yeah. yeah. So I, what about I, so they're not giving Marcus Mariota any snaps at all? I think he might be hurt. He's hurt. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, Sam Ellinger. Had a bad stat line, but if you actually watch every single watch play, tape. watch the tape. It's actually, yes. it's you know, it wasn't his fault. Two tipped for interceptions, and I'll be breaking it down. Speaking we got to get you the all twenty-two this year, Billy. Yeah. Speaking of watch the tape, we got to get Pete Prisco a Hall of Fame vote. No, that's what yeah, I, Will I, Brinson. Will yeah. Brinson hit me up too. Yeah, except I don't think he was talking about getting him a Hall of Fame vote. I think he was talking about getting Pete Prisco into the, into Hall, the Hall of Fame? Fame as a contributor to okay, the game. That might be too far. I'm, I mean, I'm down to explore it. We'll try, we but try. I think we have actually a better... Dan Heron's going to get in the Hall of Fame before Pete Prisco. Maybe. And I'm talking football Hall but of we Fame. But like, maybe we can play up the whole... Like, there's very few Italians in That's the Hall true. of Fame, and it's it's he's, past time that we've made up for the discrimination. Well, he's got to stop stumping for Tony Baselli then. Yeah. It's all, and it's also, big enough. Pete... He, I'm gonna say pervert. With Maybe yeah, he's definitely a pervert. <laughs> Maybe we get Pete Prisco like Inspector Gadget when Tony Baselli finally does get in. He's got a trench coat. We just hide Pete Prisco in there. I think that like I, Pete might have a Hall of Fame vote. It does he? I don't know. So then vote for I'm yourself. A, I'm gonna text Pete and see. I don't know if he does. But okay, if if he does not have a Hall of Fame vote, we should get him one. Yeah. And if he uh, is not, if he has a Hall of Fame vote, we should try to get him into the Hall of Fame. Yes. All right, uh, what else on the recap? That's it. All right, numbers. Since we didn't get it right, you want to just go again? 78. Yeah, sure. 99. 8. This, this spin does not 18. count towards official totals. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay, all right. Officially Overruled. sanctioned spin. Double. Oh, 69 was just up there. Both count. Um, by the way, 87. I, I have oh to write. God. What did you guess? I have 78. I have to write some wrongs. Uh, turns out Wait, it's not what? Buffalo. It's not <laughs> Buffaloes in North America. It's Bison. I should have yeah. known that. Bison. Bison. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, unfortunately, elephants do not look at humans like oh, humans. Oh no! Look at what? Come Billy, on. this is worse than Sturgill writing a song about a what dead dog. What the fuck, Billy? I know, dude. I I've been thinking about that all weekend, like, and it makes me smile every time I think that an elephant wants to boot me. Yeah. All right, 79. All right, 99. <laughs> Are you done? Yes. All right, 99. All right, Eight. 55. This counts. 18. 69. <laughs> so how do they look at humans? Turns out the study wasn't conclusive. <laughs> no way. Dude, yeah, I got a bunch, of ele- a bunch of elephant hardos 19. messaging me. Like elephant psychologists yeah. saying, like, I know the study you were looking at. It's wrong. Uh, yeah, you have a list of studies that I've said this before. Or, uh, whatever. There's studies. Arborists? Any arborists? Yeah, this no. is bullshit. Shockingly, uh, most of the arborists that hit me up were like, you're right, our job is that we show up. And then we're like, we laugh when the owner walks away from the tree and we're like, yeah, this tree is one of the worst trees. Keep I've it ever on seen. the hush. But uh, yeah, I respect the hustle for all the arborists out there. Keep grinding. Elephants go crazy when they go into musk. <laughs> Love you more. guys. 80. 99. 18. By the way, this Friday is the one year anniversary of the machine. Oh, wow. We did like 20. Okay. 69. Well, I just saw eight. Co- eight, eight, eight. Oh, eight, oh my eight, God. Eight, 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 eight. No eight, way. Oh, wait, what the fuck? Bad. That was going That's to be eight. The, Wait, that was the first time was, there was three balls yeah, trying to get in. It was, it was literally the. Gang bang. It was, it was the Mr. Smithers. Eight. All numbers stay the same. It was Mr. Burns' immune Mr. system. Mr. Burns' immune system. Yeah, 41. Three Stooges theory. 
All right. Shout out to all the winners. I still, still love you guys.